good. No one is holy before God. I need someone to cleanse me. No one is pure. No one is righteous in your sight. I need someone to save me. Try 
I'm standing on the promises of Christ, my King. Through eternal ages, let His praises ring. Glory in the highest, I will shout and I will sing. I'm standing on the promises that God has made to me. I am standing, standing on the promises. Yes, I am standing. Standing on the promises, on the promises of God. When I'm standing on the promises, I cannot fall. Listening every moment to the Spirit's call. in my Savior as my all in all When I'm standing on the promises I am standing tall I am standing standing on the promises Yes, I am standing standing promises on the promises of God on the promises of God on the promises I'm bound to him eternally by love's strong cord Overcoming daily with the spirit sword Standing on the promises of Christ my Lord Hi, Redemption Kids families. Happy November. Today is the 1st of November, and that means we've got a new memory verse. Our memory verse for the month of November is in Hebrews. So if you have your Bible, pull up your Bible, go right to the very end, which is Revelations, and just come a few chapters in to Hebrews. And it's Hebrews 11:6. I'm gonna go through slowly and show you some of the actions, and then we'll practice together. So Hebrews 11, 6. The first part is, and without faith. And so for faith, we've done this one before. You point to your forehead and then you karate chop. So, and without faith. It is impossible to please him. So for impossible, you're gonna take one hand, you're gonna stick out your thumb and your finger, and put your other hand flat, and you're gonna tap it twice. So it is impossible to please who? To please him, to please God. So we're gonna point out. So we'll do those first two lines. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. The next part is for whoever would draw near. So we're just gonna put our arm in front of us like this for whoever, for whomever that is. So for whoever would draw near. And just use your two hands to say, as if you're saying, come to me. So for whoever would draw near to God. We know that one, that one's easy. So let's do those first few lines together. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God. And let's learn the next part. When you draw near to God, you must believe that he exists. And we've done believe before too. So believe again, you point to your forehead, but instead of karate chopping, 
You point to your forehead and you hold both your hands. Must believe that he, again God, exists. Okay, so that line is must believe that he exists and that he rewards. So and that he rewards is a new one. You're gonna take your two pointer fingers and your thumbs and you're gonna make the letter C. One's gonna be a proper C and one's gonna be a backward C. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna kinda of link those together like this and put it flat in front of you and then you're gonna move it forward. And that he rewards those who seek him. So to seek, we're going to look as if we're looking for God but him, of course, is God, and so we point up. So those last parts is, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Let's try it all together. Hebrews 11, 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Great job. Have a great day. Good morning, Redemption Kids. It's so good to be with you this morning. And uh, this morning our lesson is very uh, thought-provoking, which means it makes us think. Think about how God made us and how we need to be right with God. And if you remember last week, Mr. Jenkinson was talking about sin and how we are wrecked. He used the word wrecked and or broken how we need Jesus. We need Jesus to save us, to make us new. And he had a wallet that he brought out. And when we're born, all we do, we get keep paid back by sin and more sin and more sin. And that when we're born, even as little babies, we, we have a sinful heart can only do sin. We can only sin, cheat, and steal, steal toys from everybody because we're broken. And this morning, Mrs. Guyatt brought something with her. And if you can see it, it's a string of lights. And there's something wrong with this because it won't go on. And you know what? All morning I've been saying to it, come on. Just work. Why won't you work? But it's broken. And there's nothing that the string of lights can do to make it work. It needs somebody else to help it. And that's what our lesson is about today. We're broken and we need help. And we're going to find out more about my lights later. So we'll just put them aside for now. And I, we're going to look at these guys over here. And maybe you remember them from a few months ago when Mrs. Guyatt was talking about Aaron's sons. And if you could think really far back, what were those guys' names? Do you remember? They were Nadab and Abihu. Were they good guys? Were those guys good guys? God had asked them to worship him in a certain way. He had asked them to sacrifice in a certain way. And they said, nope, we're going to do it our own way. And remember what happened? That's right. It was sin that came out. And the consequences of sin, do you remember what God did? The consequences of sin was death, wasn't it? 
And that was a good warning for, for us to do things God's way. Because God says in Romans 6 and 23 that the wages of sin is death. And that just doesn't mean that our bodies are going to die, but that's true. It means that we'll be separated from God forever and ever. And we'll be in hell. And we need to remember that because God wants nothing to do with sin. And so that's why the consequence is so great for our sin. Because it separates us from God. And do you remember... A few weeks back, I brought a mirror, and I couldn't find one today because I gave that mirror to somebody else so they could put it in their room. But you remember I put some things in front of the mirror, and it reflected what I put in front of it. But then when I painted it, there was no reflection. And that was like us. When Adam and Eve were created by God, they were made to reflect God's image. But then sin happened, and they can't reflect God's glory anymore. So God had to make a way so that we could reflect his glory, to obey him, to do what he wants us to do. So we have a big problem, don't we? And our problem is we're broken. Like Mr. Jenkins had said, we're wrecked by our sin. And there is a big problem because, do you remember? Does God love sin or hate sin? Put a thumbs down if God hates sin. Good job. God does. He hates sin. But you know what? God loves his people. And he wants to make a way that we can reflect him that we can be in not broken anymore, that we can have a relationship with him. But something has to happen. And the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 and 22 that without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So I can't get rid of my sin unless blood is shed. And so that's why in the Old Testament, God asked them to bring a lamb and to kill the lamb and there would be blood shed and it would cover their sin. But that wasn't the perfect way. We know the perfect way to cover our sin was when Jesus died because he was the, the perfect sacrifice for us because we were broken and we needed something perfect to die for us. But the sheep in the Old Testament was a good example of what Jesus was going to do in the New Testament. So now I'm going to share with you about two guys. And you're going to remember who they are because it's way in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 4, right at the beginning of time. And if you can remember, Adam and Eve, they had two sons. Do you remember what their names were? Cain and Abel. Two sons. And Cain was a farmer, and Abel was a shepherd. And one of them decided that they didn't want to be broken anymore. And they wanted to do what God wanted. But the other one was like, I don't want to do what God wants. So let's see. Let's look in our Bibles and let's find out what happens with Cain and Abel. Well, God asked Cain and Abel to bring an offering to him so that they could sacrifice. And do you remember what God had already said? To bring a lamb because it had to be blood that was spilled that would cover their sin so Abel he wanted to do what God wanted and so he went out to his field and he got the cutest 
smallest, best, best lamb that was in his, his flock, and he brought it to God. And he said, God, here's my lamb, and I want to do it your way. Let's see what God says. Because in the New Testament, it talks about Abel and how he brought a lamb. It's in Hebrews 11, so way in the New Testament, after Jesus died on the cross, Hebrews 11, it says that Abel obeyed God and made the right kind of offering to God. He was a friend of God. Abel was a friend of God. He wanted to be close to God. He wanted to link arms with God. He wanted to honor God. But then there was Cain. And Cain, he liked to do things his own way. Because remember, when we're born, we're broken. And we need someone to fix us. And Cain knew that he was to bring this kind of offering. But you know, he was a farmer. And he thought, wow, well, you know what? I have this amazing offering for God. I've made so much in my garden and in my fields. Oh, this is so beautiful. I'll bring this to God. And God looked at Cain's offering. He was pleased with Cain's offering. Let's see what the Bible says about Cain's offering. In Genesis 4, so way back in the Old Testament again, Genesis 4, 14, it says that Cain couldn't be a friend of God. And Cain was punished. And God sent him out of the area he was living. He sent him away, the Bible says. So although Cain thought, my offering's pretty good, it wasn't what God required. And so it wasn't good enough because Cain had done it his way. And we have to do it God's way. And it's worth it because there's a verse in Romans, Romans 6 and 23, and it says that the gift of God is eternal life. God wants to give us a life that lasts forever and ever and ever, so that when our bodies die, we can go to heaven to be with Jesus. We can live forever, but we're broken. And we need someone to fix us. And the Bible says that only Jesus can fix us. Only Jesus can fix us. Kind of like my lights. My lights are broken, aren't they? And they need to be fixed. So somebody else has to fix them. So, you know what? I'm going to fix them. Because my lights can't fix themselves just like I can't fix myself. And I'm going to go and I'm going to find a new battery. I'm going to make this new. Just like Jesus can make us new. He just doesn't make us better. And only he can do it. And when I put my battery in, there we go. Look at it. It's new. It works now. It just doesn't have a better battery in it. It has a new battery in it. And that's exactly what God does for us. He makes us new. He puts a new heart in us. Our old heart, our old black heart, our darkened heart that wanted nothing to do with God. 
he comes and he replaces it. And he makes us new so that we can shine for Jesus for the rest of our lives. We can reflect all the goodness that he can do in our lives. Let's pray, boys and girls. Heavenly Father, thank you for this morning. Thank you that you are the one that makes us new. Thank you that you died just like the, the lamb, that you died upon a cross and you spilled your blood to cover our sin, that you were the perfect sacrifice. Dear Jesus, I pray that these children will one day very soon see that they're broken and that they need you to make them new and that they can spend eternity forever and ever with you in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for what you do in our lives, how you change us from broken to new to reflect your goodness and your glory. Amen. Thank you for spending this morning with me, girls and boys. It's been so nice and it's so nice that i get to see some of you actually at church and i'd love to hear from you sometime maybe we could even meet at a park so you could ask your mom and dad if they would like to meet mrs guy at the park one day and we can and just have fun there together and i'd love to see you in person hope you have a wonderful